Good evening, I'm Stacey Amos for News Channel 8, and these are the top stories that we have for you tonight. A mother's worst nightmare as we have an exclusive on the Fredericksted drowning. The final part of Senator Barshinger's interview. Puerto Rico is continuing to fight, and the Virgin Islands brings home awards for martial arts. Those stories and more are up next for you on News Channel 8. <laughs> tonight, a 32-year-old man is still missing after a tragic boating accident in Fredericksted yesterday. News Channel 8's Wes Small files this exclusive interview with his mother. Stacy, very distressing news. Uh, over the last uh, almost 24 hours now, we have, I believe, a 32-year-old uh, young man who was in the dinghy right off of this uh, area here at the Ann Abramson Pier yesterday around 1.40 or so, 2 o'clock, and we have not found this young man yet. Uh, we have his mother, who I'm going to try to go to next, who is about 200 yards there. Uh, just She's sitting here waiting for her son. I'm here with Davis and Charlemagne. We've, he wears many hats, and uh, he is part of the rescue um, in, in his business as well. We have the Coast Guard out there now. Uh, VIPD. Mr. Sherry, VIPD. I, I know the rescue people have been out there. Liz Goggins has been on the media. This is pretty sad uh, for this man's family, but it doesn't look good. Tell us what's going on. And you, we've got some other concerns about this open port uh, area here, too. You're not going to believe what you're going to hear. Go ahead, sir. Wes, again, um, yes, just want to say good day to your listening audience. Uh, we've been out here. We got the call yesterday afternoon, roughly about, I would say, about a little after one. We was to a training in Sprat Hall and um, the fire service and rescue came out. We ran out here. We were one of the first responders with the police department. Um, <clears throat> how we understand it was an individual. He was in a dinghy and um, for some reason he was in distress. He got off the dinghy, tried to tow it inside and um, it was unsuccessful by doing so. And some way he, lo he loosed the dinghy and started to swim in. For some reason the currents was very, very strong yesterday and um, about the, the, the witnesses said they saw him for a little bit crying out for help, you know, asking for help, but for some reason, the, the kids that dive off of the dock, they said they couldn't hear him that clear, and then after that, about eight minutes after that, they saw him went under. Um, again, I want to just give my condolences to the family, because we've been out here till last night, um, trying to see if we uh, observed or saw anything in the water. We made a perimeter check all around the ocean. Um, Jason, a friend of mine from Rescue, he was on the jet skis. He did an awesome job from when we came up. He grabbed a jet ski from down there, and also the guys from Rainbow, who um, also owns those jet skis. They were the ones who um, actually loaned the jet skis to us and they were out there also helping. I think it was a joint effort. Um, even the people, the fishermen out here, they was also doing the same. Um, unsuccessful of finding or retrieving a body. And again, like I said, it's something that, that you know, it, it, it hurts everybody. We all feel it. The parents are out there. From yesterday, the family was out there and they're still out there. So I guess, you know, they're trying to keep the faith. Now this again. young man is a visitor to his family here. They got St. Lucian roots. I might say, I'm going to try to talk to the mother in a second, but he wasn't a good swimmer, people are saying there. Right. Um, how I understand, well, during the day we went on the vessel that he was, was somewhere tied into, and we, we found his um, license, and he's a resident, I think, of New Jersey or Connecticut, one of those places. Well, I'm going to talk to the right. mother in a, in a and, few seconds. And uh, um, he came down, I guess, for vacation. He was only yeah. here, I was told, about almost, almost a month. So again, um, I don't think he is really frequent of our waters here, and um, again, it's a concern because you also have kids that jump off of this dock here. We're going to get to that now, but I want to tell you, the wind is blowing. I, I guess there's undercurrents, but look at this. It's beautiful. It's very deceptive, but there's no lifeguards here. I want it to be perfectly understood that St. Clair Williams, Commissioner for Housing, Parks, and Recreation, said there's only two locations on St. Croix with official lifeguards. One's Kramer's Park, and the other one is the pool in Fredericksted. So please, please be careful as we go out here in our beautiful Caribbean Sea. We've got some other concerns here. Uh, what's going on in this open well, pool? Wes, again, um, I don't think they should have lifeguards here. This is not a place to swim. 
Yeah. It's not a place that yeah. you, you swim and you jump off a dock. That's the point you want to get to. Yeah, so it shouldn't be, there's no lifeguards here. They should have yeah. no kind of entry in this port. This port is uh, under Homeland Security, I would think. And to all ports, you should have a twit card to get in. All right, now tell so, us what's going on as far as Homeland Security is concerned. Well, I mean, the issue is I think manpower is one thing that um, they need to beef up on because one man can't do the job for everybody. Yeah. And I feel for the, the port masters them on the, on, the, on the dock because, you know, if an individual have to be one dock master for the whole island or for that day, it's kind of hampering because, you know, we, if, like a case of emergency that happened yesterday, you know, access to the port, like keys for the, the emergency vehicles to get in, that's a problem. So we, we need to try to see how we can fix those While problems. we're on that point, um, while you were doing this yesterday, and I believe some, some standards by we're talking about, what, uh, possibly some 10 immigrants, illegal, um, from, from one of the islands well, um, I heard, came yeah. up here? That's what, that's what we heard yesterday, that 10 Cubans, or they were speculating, pull up on a vessel here, and there was nobody here to see or what. So we have 10 Cubans on the island right well, now? That's, again, I can't say something like that. Right, yeah. That's speculation, but they saw a vessel came in, and I think that next vessel, a week before, they confiscated with nobody been on the vessel, but it was a vessel with a lot of gasoline tanks on it or whatever the case may be. So, again, I mean, if we're looking at guns or drugs coming into our ports, we got to really be careful because this here is a port that seemed to be not secured 24 hours and we need it to be and at night I understand the skylarking possibly going around with kids jumping off the pier and partying here at the dock is that that's uh, you correct. heard that as well well we heard that yesterday too I mean they have you know kids smoking pot doing different little stuff here with the girlfriends or whatever again this is a this is a dock now, you know this dock is utilized for when cruise ships come in yes sir. Um, again for any other reasons for recreation it is not and I think that is known mm -hmm. so Whoever is listening needs to take part into that and we'll make sure because eventually, you know, we had, a, we had a problem yesterday. Sad what happened. We're not sure if the life is lost. But again, we don't want no more accidents like that to happen. We don't. And with that, now we're going to go to uh, that accident victim's mother. And I'm here with Mary right here. God bless you, sweetheart. You know, we all pulling for Randy. That's the young man's name. He's he's 32. Randy, yeah. what's his last name? Rido, R E D O. Yeah, and where he was living, he's living in the states. And yes, what he just um, he was living in North Carolina. He's he's here right now for two months. For two months visiting. Yes. And to your knowledge, sweetheart, what happened? When did you get the call yesterday? Around what time? Yesterday, I was at my mother's house, and I heard um, my sister said, um, "She's right here." So I she brought me the phone. And I um, said, um, my sister-in-law called from Kansas and said, um, somebody called and said, the Valmont truck is at the, the, the waterfront and they believe there's a distress call, 911. So she asked me if I know anything. I said, yes, we dropped Randall to go on the boat the morning and I think he's all right. So my son, at the same time, my other son called and said, Mommy, where is Randall? I said, um, he's um, by the boat. He said, Mommy, somebody just drowned. We head down to Frederickstead. When I got there, the cops told me that um, he's a young man. He was on that boat over there. He was going out in the dinghy and the thing, it looked like the current pulled him and he fell in the water and kind of, yeah. and I, it was very distressful. I know it's rough, man. Yeah. I know it's rough for you. Yeah. But let me tell you, could Randy swim? Yes, he can. Yes, from the time he was four years. Yeah. Yes. Well, we haven't given up hope, and neither is the Coast Guard, as you can see from these pictures, just taken a few seconds ago from having this interview, Mary. We will pray, continue to pray for Randy. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. You're please. welcome. At the Frederickstead Pier, it's not a story any reporter would like to do, but we're covering it nonetheless. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. And all of us here at News Channel 8 send out our condolences to the family and friends grieving Randy's loss. Now on somewhat of a lighter note, we continue our interview with Senator Craig Barshinger in which he responds to tough issues affecting the territory in this upcoming election. I think that the despair comes for two reasons. One is that there's a leadership gap. In the past, we have had governing, government where if you were hooked up, you did better than if you weren't hooked up. And in a time of crisis is when equality becomes more important. And our government, specifically our executive branch, is going to have to make sure that people are all treated equally. 
in the government, we must stop letting people go because of who, what their political connections are. The last election is over, and the only factor that should be in the mind of the chief executive is making a government which is lean and mean and delivers government services effectively so that all people are happy when they go to get services, be it to renew their driver's license or to apply for a building permit or to register their child for school. That is a shift for the Virgin Islands. It used to be the hookup, you know, and now we're, I think, moving beyond that. So despair comes from the fact that you hear the teachers were dismissed by folks who came into their room and took them from their students never to see them again. They went to the office and were dismissed. That has got to stop. We really do have paradise this close, and yet we're in despair. How can that be? The leadership gap causes it, and the system under which we live is what is causing us right now to feel fear. But in fact, given the fact that we have people who will pay and save up all year long just to spend a week or two with us, we need to enhance our tourism product for St. Croix. We need to get our WAPA rates down. And the Water and Power Authority has finally issued a or developed a contract for 18 megawatts of solar photovoltaic power for the grid. And this is going to make a difference, a small difference, but it's a start. I'm seeing signs that we're moving in the right direction, but the key thing is to get rid of this leadership gap. And we thank Senator Barshinger for his time. Coming up, Puerto Rico continues its fight against drugs, and Trinidad and Tobago receives an honor. Those stories and more up next for you in your Caribbean report. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Now here's your Caribbean report. From Puerto Rico, Governor Louis Fortuno met Tuesday afternoon with Assistant Attorney General Tony West, the co-chair of President Barack Obama's working group on the status of Puerto Rico. It was the first in a series of meetings initiated by Fortuno for the coming days with federal government officials focusing on Puerto Rico's fight against drug trafficking. From CARICOM, Kamaluddin Mohammed, former Trinidad and Tobago cabinet minister and ambassador to CARICOM, is this year's recipient of the region's highest award, the Order of the Caribbean Community. From the Dominican Republic, the eastern area was shaken by a 4.4 magnitude earthquake early Wednesday morning, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. It was the second earthquake in the country in less than a week, following the 5.1 magnitude quake near the Haiti Dominican Republic border over the weekend. From the BVI, the government has taken its energy conservation methods to the road with the installation of energy-saving streetlights on July 10th in Roadtown. From Guyana, the Council for Human and Social Development of the Caribbean Community began a meeting in Guyana on Tuesday with the region's top public servant urging zero tolerance to violence against women. From St. Kitts, Dubai's Range Development has signed an agreement to build a Park Hyatt Hotel in St. Kitts. The project will be financed through the St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment Program through the sale of individual shares for $400,000. From Nevis, despite the economic challenges on Nevis brought on by the world recession, Culture Rama, the island's premier annual cultural festival, will go on. That assurance came from the Minister of Culture in the Nevis Island Administration, Hensley Dan. Daniel, as he pointed to the many benefits of the festivity now in its 38th year. From St. Lucia, a snake that scientists had declared extinct long ago has been found living in a nature reserve on a tiny island just off the east of St. Lucia. At least 11 St. Lucia razor snakes were spotted and tagged by a group of scientists hunting for the snake in the Maria Islands Reserve. In your cricket update, Chris Gale has called on his West Indian teammates to push hard for the series winning victory today when they face New Zealand in St. Kitts in the third Digicel One Day International. And Tets batsman Craig Braithwaite has been named captain of the West Indies team for the ICC's under-19 World Cup in Australia next month. It runs from August 11th through the 26th. Please be sure to check our Facebook page for all full stories and details in the Caribbean Report. Well, the Virgin Islands flag was raised up high recently in Atlanta, and it's regarding the martial arts. News Channel 8's West Mall has the story. Thank you very much. I'm here with Postmaster Jackson. 
And uh, we all know him. He's been head of the VI Postal System here at St. Croix for a long time. I know that. But he's also in charge of, of a wonderful movement here with karate and so forth. Uh, do I address you as sensei? Uh, Grandmaster. Grand, let's keep it. Professor. Grandmaster Professor. Grandmaster Professor. Yeah. Well, we have some pictures that are inside of my email that accompany this report, but I'm very proud to say that y'all came back with a lot of awards with the Atlanta World Martial Arts Tournament. And how do you say that, sir? Ja, uh, ja Go Jiu Jitsu. Ru. Well, That's dude. the name of the system. Congratulations, yeah. Postmaster. Yes. Please give us the overview on how our youth did. Uh, I would say fantastic. Our youth did uh, fantastic. I mean, the students were phenomenal. The VI flag was rocking and waving. And all you hear, let's go VI. And let's just give them the drive and all that. And they, they did fantastic. We took over 60 something positions. Listen, I just you like know, to. I mean, it, 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 it yes. was fantastic. 15 first place trophies. 15 first place, that's correct. 17 second place trophies, 22 third place, and, and 20 15. finalist medals right. in the 44th battle of Atlanta World Karate Championship yeah. Tournament. And that's a world tournament. Competition was strong. There were competitors from all over the world. Like Korea and all over? I didn't see any Korean, but most so you had from all over America. You had Canada. Yes, sir. You also had Puerto Rico had a delegation that was over there also. But uh, like I said, the Virgin Islands was well represented. And I feel very proud to know that our youths are focusing on the right thing when they get into martial arts. The, the strength of our system encompasses what we teach. And that is the three aspects of the art, which is the spiritual, believing there's a God, a supreme being, the mental, which is their education, and that they seek education, they seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. And lastly, the physical, which they have exemplified every time we go away. We're always coming back with fantastic results. And that's through the grace and blessings of God. If people would like to get in touch with you, because yes. that's what the next step we're at right now. They want to yes. know how they could get their youth yes. involved in this honorable um, okay. situation. They can always touch base with me, Wes, at 340-642-0300. I repeat, 340-642-0300. We have classes in St. Thomas at the UVI Wellness Center on Saturdays from 10 to 1. And we have classes here on St. Croix. Tuesdays on Saturdays. I'm still working up another venue because there was a closing of the flex gym, but there's a lot of offers there. So again, we'll be ready to rock and roll, develop our youth, and cultivate the people in our Virgin Islands so that when we go abroad, they will know that the Virgin Islands is a force to reckon with. Wow! 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 All I got to say now is, Stacy, back to you. Thanks, Wes, and what an achievement. Congratulations to all for making us all in the U.S. Virgin Islands feel proud. On another note, there will be a fundraiser for Fred and Tito, who were involved in a horrible car accident recently on the South Shore. The car wash at Lionel's gas station in Golden Rock will be helping them with their medical bills. It's this Saturday, July 14th, starting at 8 a.m., Please come out and show your support for these two individuals who are banking on your help. It's Crime Stoppers up next. This newscast has been sponsored by Mario's Virgin Crystal. Let us save you the hassle of lugging those jugs around. Purified bottled water conveniently delivered to your home or office. Also available in your favorite grocery store. Call 773-2810. This is News Channel 8. This is News Channel 8. Now here's your weekly Crime Stoppers report. This is Judy with your weekly Crime Stoppers report. Crime Stoppers is asking for your help to solve the following crimes. If you know something, say something, as law enforcement cannot control crime without the help of the entire community. On St. Croix, police are asking for your help in solving a rash of burglaries that have been occurring in some different homes in estate wind over recent weeks. Now, all kinds of things have been getting stolen. If you have any information or you witness any suspicious activities, suspicious vehicles in your area, suspicious individuals in your area, please call Crime Stoppers or call the police and let us know. Do be a nosy neighbor. Look out for everyone's homes because the home you might save 
from a burglary could very well be your own. We would also like to add, if you want help starting a neighborhood watch in your area, you can also call us about that as well. And on St. John, on Thursday, June 14th, at about 11 p.m., a woman left her brown backpack in her vehicle in the Weston Hotel parking lot area. When she went back to her vehicle two hours later, she discovered that her backpack was missing. Inside the backpack was a silver MacBook Pro, five checks that were made payable to her, and her wallet. Now, the wallet was found sometime later. It, it was actually turned into the resort with all of its contents intact. And on St. Thomas, we're bringing you a crime that we brought you a couple of weeks ago, but the police still need your help in solving this. This occurred on Monday, April 9th. Police received several calls from concerned citizens about hearing shots being fired and a vehicle driving actually into a bush, all in the area of Pillsbury Heights near the National Guard Armory. Now, when the officers got there, they found 21-year-old Lincoln Lewis in his red Suzuki Vicara, and he was unresponsive. He had gunshot wounds all over his body, and he did die as a result of his injuries. His family would really like closure to this crime, so if you have any information about it, please call Crime Stoppers and just help put an end to all the senseless killings that are occurring in our territory. You can submit information on these or any other crimes by calling the number right there on your screen, 1-800-222-TIPS. <clears throat> or you can log on to our website, <clears throat> excuse me, at crimestoppersusbi.org. Our stateside operators, they do speak several languages, and your tips are completely anonymous. If your information leads to an arrest or the recovery of stolen property or illegal drugs or weapons, we will pay you a cash reward according to your instructions. Remember, the arrest of a burglar is $714 plus 10% of the value of any property recovered. For the arrest of a homicide suspect is a minimum of $1,500 in cash. This has been Judy with your weekly Crime Stoppers Report.